Hello and welcome. Today's date comes in out of Friday. It is the uh, 25th day of October 2019. Like always, all bets, trades, are the like within each his own risk and their own reward. This will take this video will talk about silver as the price is up to a little over $18 right now. Or for the day, it is up 1.8%. Uh, Yesterday was up 1.7 as we had the uh, price stay within the 1740 level. And it was Amongst this correction that I put all of these lines in there, which represent Fibonacci retracement from this recent high on September the 4th, near uh, 19, well, 19 and two-thirds, 1965. And we're representing the lows that we've seen, uh, I think it might have been this one. It would have been more like me to pick this one over this one. Either way, these levels have, uh, well, they found support at this point. That was September 13th, and here we are October the 25th. It was able to have a failed continuation or a failed breakout on September the 23rd. It's paused it, and obviously it failed the 18 lows, and we had a failed breakdown. But it just, it just stayed doing this sideways thing because the story of the market from October the 2nd up until really yesterday was just in this sideways correctionary phase supporting the key uh, Fibonacci level at 1740 and it was resisting near 17 and three quarters. There was an attempt a few days ago on the 21st to get above the 18 average of highs but price action came back down and then continued doing the same old thing for the next two days thereafter that. Yesterday it made another attempt to leave correctionary phase and it has now. It's gotten decently above it and even now, I can see a barely rising 18 average highs and lows. That's another reason I like a front-weighted uh, moving average. It says WMA. It's weighted moving, but the first uh, way I ever heard it named was front-weighted, which is, uh, as far as moving average is concerned, whatever period you are taking, current price, multiply that. So in this case, 18 periods would I use. And then the previous period, well, that minus the previous. So this is, it takes the data for this one, it multiplies it by 17, the one before that by 16, and then it divides all those numbers by the, the sum of your uh, moving averages. So an 18 plus 17 plus 16, so on and so forth. So that's the math on how it's calculated. And that's uh, been my favorite to use over that of a simple or a uh, exponential moving average. So now that we have the price breaking out above, it seems as if we're going to be heading up to this 1823. We're pretty much there. It's a pierce below at least right now. As the intraday price has come in at 1819, we take a look at this on a single hour term time frame. It really got going yesterday morning at about 8 o'clock. That's 24 hours ago. It's 8 o'clock right now on Friday as I'm doing this right now, 802. And there's the intraday level of resistance that established around 1783, and it got there right off the bat, and it kept on supporting it. A little bit of an ascending triangle-ish kind of level, because as amazing as this level of resistance was, the original level of support tested in here. Let's take a look at this 15, just maybe we can see it a little bit better. But the support that established here at uh, 1770 never got retested. And then this support here at 1773, not tested again. Now this one was tested quite often, 1776, which was the general area where it con uh, congested in here and resisted this point here. So the resistance from 1130 in the morning, New York time to 1300 hours was supported. And even really this level of resistance was supported in here because we had the break at around uh, 2100 hours almost. So the range from 1,800 hours to 21 was support from the range of like 2,100 hours up until like 1 o'clock in the morning today. And then it's just been grinding its way up, up until we have another level of resistance from 2 o'clock. And, and right now we're having a good exitation of the 18 average of, uh, on this 15-minute term time frame. So it's up to 1,820. It's, uh, well, it should be just moments away from hitting that 1823 mark. As uh, these Fibonacci levels that I put in, they seem to do very, very well. Now, they're set up right now as far as where these numbers will be moving forward to be very short-term numbers at 1876, and then all those numbers after that. That's And when we get into situations where price uh, 
say is to break out above this and I'm going to put a different uh, silver uh, one on here so let's just uh, go ahead and put in say something like this there we go so I can use the drawing tool and plus when you see all those lines they can be a little I'd rather not see them although I got lines in here so I would have put those in whenever let's see what they represent they represent, well, there's $14 doing this thing here, $20. This is this my upside fib, 32 No. Well, this is a sideways range that we're in more than anything. That's what I would have drew this in for. And within it on the monthly chart, the moves that we're having, it's until we get above or below it, we're in a range that we've pretty much been in solidly for really the last half of this decade. Okay. And when we go back to the correctionary phase excitation, which is its second attempt to do so on the daily term from the uh, high over 19, it's the first attempt to do so on the weekly chart. And boy, is it an interesting spot when I take a look at it. Usually markets will come back to where they came from on a good correction. From here to here, it didn't do it because where we came from is here. But either way, it came down to the 18 average, but not quite the lows. It's not like, it's like a major, major level that just is like a magnet that is so powerful. And whenever you go down there, it just always seems to know. But I like to use it as the area where if I'm looking for weakness or if a move's going to be a failure, I'm going to be using this as the most easiest level to tell me if it's failing or not. When it doesn't even touch it and it keeps a beautiful rising pattern, by no means that's not the case, and it's a, a bullish run with the rising 18. And we have leaving this high within such. And when I see that, you have your point A high. It doesn't matter where it was. Point B low really doesn't matter where it is either, as long as it's there, meaning that you can notice the good price. So much so that uh, you can have a very noticeable price retracement correction. And when you go over that of uh, Fibonacci, we'll calculate this now I haven't calculated this yet but one of the ways of doing it is okay well what's this key high and I'm just going to put that number in we got 1965 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my calculator up and I'm going to take 1965 and divide it by the low the low is this period here we can see it's 1689 or 1690 rounded and I'm not putting decimals in here because it automatically will round the numbers for me and I want to get this will give it to me in two decimals, basically. High divided by the low to the root of the exponents, which is these percentages here, multiply the low. So 1790 and 1855 would represent some key levels. So we'll put in here, oh, put in 1790. So 1855 should be our next selected breakout, which probably should coincide with the uh, uh, last Fibonacci that I had from before. So, what did I do? I think color theme, uh, object tree, Okay, well, I got this on white. I want the gray color. I did this accidentally before. And now this is, like, so small. Well, I can show you maybe some of the uh, okay, settings that we have. I'm trying to get it back to the way it was, but I'll do it this way in case you're... Okay, well, the scales need to go up. I got like 16. I like a light gray. So, and I wish, anyway, for now, we'll keep it as that and, uh, Let's now put in a, another Fibonacci, because that's what I was trying to do the whole time. And 
and 1855. Now we're already at a 1823 key point, so that's like one of the ways to get there. Here, now 1850 was uh, a significant level for this high. So let's take a look at this now uh, back here in the daily. So getting out above here on the 18, I wouldn't be surprised if it did make a move up and then matches. And when we get there, this, this is really what it comes down to it. This line is the way there to here. So a little bit of resistance you should exp experience, maybe you go like this, come back and do something like that as one possibility if you're going to get there. And when you fi don't find resistance where you're supposed to, well, oftentimes it's a fast move to next level. Well, of course, that would be previous high. And really not really, because after 1855, you'd be looking at 1896 or 19 even short term as well as the 76.4% Fibonacci level. And... Uh, Let's even take a look at how the uh, 23.6, 17.51 fared out. And we'll put this on the short term. And then we'll go to, say, the hourly again. So the Fibonacci levels would have been in play from this point on, because it was high divided by this low. And these two key levels between the 23 and 38.2 most certainly was major, as it resisted, resisted. Now what was very unusual would have been how on the 9 o'clock move yesterday, how price action just came this noticeable amount and then broke it that way. Why do I say unusual? Because usually if it's going to make a move like this up near a Fibonacci point, if it doesn't hit it immediately, it would probably at least hit it thereafter. So it would have meant something like maybe extend the rally like this a little bit as a more commonality for it. Of course, piercing above it is always a major common thing as well. That did not happen. But as it plays out, you, I analyze it the exact same way in that the uh, breakout above it, what it got there, it's a serious move breaking in towards that area. And you still had to get above this previous high here as it was. It was just very rare that it didn't go up just a little bit more amongst this move. But it's gotten by this long sideways consolidation pattern. And this 1850 was most certainly a big resistance here because that's just the obvious spot you go to next. And then, okay, getting above the 1850. Well, yeah, you're looking to go back in here, maybe a little bit of resistance, of course, in there along the way. And then breaking out above this. Well, now you're talking about highs we haven't seen in a long time. So volatility could be, it's a wild card situation for how strong or even just weak even the volatility move that can go after it. And weak would be something like, oh my goodness, it grinds its way up. Or that would be, I would suppose, the start of the 20, uh, the big rally in 2010, was it? Uh, let's, I'll show you that right now by, uh, I'll just remove these uh, drawing tools. I don't want to go to the hourly, let's go to the daily. And go back to 2011, I think it was. It's when, they, it's when it broke uh, $20 before. I thought it was a very, very slow grind. And it was this. I mean, it went up nice, but the rate of ascent was consistently not volatile. It went from $18 up to like... 23, a differential of like 25, 30 percent in a rate of from August of 2010 or from to October. So two and a half months, it went up to that rate of ascent. And then volatility changed as it got bigger after that. And then it changed in here. And this is the high, of course, $50 from 17, a 3x move, 
it took less than a year to happen. So when these things are ready to go for big moves, then they'll do such. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.